Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Raymore City Council work session for Monday, April the 18th, 2022. Several items on our agenda tonight. First one being uh, the um, discussion about the use tax, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Fearborn. Uh, thank you, sir. So we wanted to bring the, the potential for a use tax uh, to the council for a little bit of discussion. Um, prior to the, ele the April 5th elections, we were going to be pretty solid in the camp, the staff camp of making a recommendation to the council that you all consider the use tax in August of this year. Uh, to that end, Ms. Harmer is here with a number of items as far as what that campaign would look like. Uh, at the April 5th election, statewide, uh, 55 use tax uh, efforts across Missouri failed. 23 passed, have a little bit more information, and if, so staff is actually coming to you tonight to discuss should we be doing the use tax in August or putting it off. As a general reminder, at a 30,000 foot level, just want to remind the council that even if we pass it in August, the use tax does not go into effect until 2023. So there is some time, but if we get too deep into 2023, it, with each month that passes, we're, we're losing revenue, much needed revenue for the city. Uh, after we got the results back, we went out on the MCMA website and asked all of the cities that had had a use tax on for a little bit deeper information. Obviously, that's not a scientific response because they respond if they want to or they're still licking their wounds and can't get back to us. Uh, some definite patterns uh, existed and the specific one that I wanna bring up to the council, which we had talked about at a previous meeting uh, after ours failed last August, of the ones that passed, only two of them did not have full chamber endorsement and support, and a majority of those, the chamber was actually used as the yes vote committee and dedicated funds to the effort. That being said, um, just some staff thoughts on uh, upcoming dates. Again, we were, we were hoping for uh, this August before we had all of this information. Uh, a couple of other developments just to kind of ruminate on with council tonight. Uh, the, the August campaign, in addition to being open for all municipal issues like it is every year, this particular year is also uh, the primary. Uh, the primaries are, uh, the primary fields are becoming uh, somewhat full uh, with different candidates. You never know where those candidates are gonna be on specific issues as they are running. Uh, that's, an, that's kind of an unknown that we have. Uh, November, uh, these issues never win in November, especially when they're on with other contentious issues. We will be at the bottom of a very long uh, ballot the, for the midterm elections. Uh, people seem angry these days at the polls. It's just kind of a feeling we get. So that's August, November, April is an open time frame. Uh, we have people, obviously, who will be running for city council. Uh, it, obviously, it didn't work this past April, but as I've just said, it, it just seems like election this past April especially was, there were a lot of just kind of anti-local government anything issues that were out there in the back of people's minds. When did we have it on the ballot previously? August, sir. Last August? Yeah. Okay. The, and again, remember, 
couple of items that were in play last August. We did not have chamber support. Uh, let me rephrase that. The chamber did not endorse for us, um, nor did they have interest in being a part of the yes committee. The, uh, the community college issue was on and people came out in droves against that tax issue. There was yard signage against that tax issue that was somewhat confusing, uh, which people could, I think we got a ton of the splatter from that last August. Uh, we had really carefully campaigned hoping that no one would be on the ballot last August. We were the first ones to actually, to be statesmanlike, go out to all the organizations that we had been hearing about and told them that we would like to be the only ones on the ballot, but unfortunately the community college, we actually had two face-to-face -face meetings with them and they declined to wait. The, and you'll also remember the library issue, uh, which did pass. The, uh, so last August, um, the potential for this August, the potential for November, April municipal elections, and then of course next August, uh, no primaries, back to municipal issues only, um, would be another possibility. But now we're getting pretty deep into the year with lost revenue. Just some thoughts, and before we take up your time, the advantage, one of the advantages uh, that we that we have this year and next year compared to August of 2021 is we were handicapped because we were not fully scheduled out with events that we could advertise this particular issue at. Um, a lot of things were canceled in the early going of it. Um, just, it, it, it felt like we, we could only run a half a campaign that we wanted to in 2021. Uh, that will not be the case this year. A uh, lot of events to present at, a lot of uh, the entire, almost the entire amphitheater season that we can advertise at. But again, that same thing will be in play in 2023 if the council wishes to wait. Jim, could you again recap the campaign previously um, and, and what those funds were going to go oh, to? Oh, sir. Sorry. Campaign is strong. We provided yeah. a yeah. lot okay. of information. Our reasoning I don't for, believe that yeah. we had uh, any uh, campaigning performed it, during the course of that. The, tax the previous election <laughs> issue. Our, our education uh, efforts. Thank uh, you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> How many times did he cringe? Because I had my back to him the entire time. <laughs> he was cringing as soon as I opened my mouth. So. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the city uh, advertised that the funding would be used, you really, really, the city advertised that the funding would be used uh, going back to what the council will remember we've called the Ibarra report, which was uh, very pointed in our personnel shortages for boots on the ground. Um, the, the worst, of course, being our police department, uh, 20 persons short. The, uh, if the issue had passed, it called for making up five of those 20 positions. None of the three departments, Parks and Rec or Police Department or Public Works, would have been fully staffed with the issue, but it would have been a great kickstart to getting us there. Growth continues, the issue is no better today than it was last August, and probably a little bit worse. The, not, not a little bit, it's, it's worse. The, the, the chances are that we would be slightly more we would still have those issues, but the, the thought is that, that in addition to those issues, we, we talk about uh, 
a number of the challenges that the city has. The trickle down being we need these personnel, but there's issues up here that we could be spending some of this money on as well. We just don't want to be quite as specific as going, going to pay for five police officers, going to pay for six. It's going to pay for police officers and other personnel for the city would be the campaign that we want. Um, we need public safety personnel. The so that was our campaign last time, sir. What compared to, efforts, or yeah, <laughs> sorry, our education effort last time, sir. Mr. Fearborn, on that thought, of those that passed, the cities that passed, um, do you have any idea? Did they all earmark their money, or do we have an idea of how how they went to the public with it? Actually, it was about 50-50 earmark versus not. Uh, I would also point out, as you all know, Belton lost their use tax campaign. They are coming back in August to try again. How much, what was the margin we lost that by? Well, we, we lose, it was like 40, 60. It wasn't close as I remember. No, it was not close. I can't remember the exact numbers. 40, 60s gonna be in that range though. I do know from talking to other mayors in the area that have, uh, who lost at the campaign and then won at a later time, uh, talked about moving from the specificity of the use of those funds to a more general fund effort and talking about if that additional funding was here, these are some of the things we could do, but they didn't get into the specifics of I know one city, I think it was Independence, passed there specifically for police, and it became obvious that it was going to be difficult for them to actually do that. So all that money is going there. Unfortunately, they're supplanting some of the general funds that would have gone to the police department and other areas because it made things way too tight for them. So they're having to be very careful how they use that funding to ensure that it goes to the police department. So it's. Uh, it's, it's, it does create an environment of difficulty when you get real specific with the use of those funds, although oftentimes it's easier to educate the people on that this is what we're gonna spend the money on, but uh, that's uh, neither here nor there, but go ahead. Appreciate it. I had three really quick thoughts on this. Um, so if we do take this off the ballot, I think this this affects other things too because you know we I know we have other issues down the road that we would like to put on the ballot in August. If we take this off, it's going to push other things down the road further. We're not looking to substitute anything else for this. We would just have nothing on the ballot at all. Is that correct? The <clears throat> and the one specifically that you may be speaking to, sir, and you and I have had this conversation. Until we get we have, we're going to have to find an additional source of revenue to fund boots on the ground people, especially police and public works, or we will not pass judicial muster uh, for going for an annexation campaign. Because the court is going to, because the first thing we have to do is turn this over to the circuit court our plan of intent, and they're gonna look at that and they're going to say, you all are down so many personnel, there is no way that you're gonna be able to take on additional territory, no matter how narrow, um, because we know you're already down. You had an independent study done even that said you're down. Uh, there are standards that have to be met. So yes, especially on that particular one, uh, it's going to be pushed back for as long as this campaign is pushed back. The other thing the council could consider is we run the campaign in August, uh, see how that goes. If it doesn't go, we just do exactly what Belton is doing and we just keep coming back time after time after time until this, until the citizens see the deterioration of services, but then as soon as it could pass, it's on. There is something to be said for 
not having the issue pass in two or three in a row and then people just start voting no to vote no on it. And Jim, when is our last day? Do we have a, a go, no go date that we have to make this decision on? Do we have until June or, or just something you need to know from us pretty soon? Yeah. I was just looking now, sir. Thank you. We would be looking for council approval of the ordinance um, the week of May 23rd. First read. Go ahead, Jim. No, it's got to be filed by the end of May. Yeah, first reads and May first, 9th, week of May 9th. yeah, May 9th. Week of May 19th is the council approval of the ordinance. I'm sorry, yes, right. second read is that May 23rd. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know there's, I know we wouldn't want to use this because it's cost prohibitive, but isn't there a window in February as well that if we were really desperate to get something on a ballot, isn't there, I, I, maybe, I'm, maybe, it's, maybe I'm wrong and my information is outdated, but. Isn't that? I don't think. There, am I thinking no, of a I different? Think, okay. yeah, I, there are. There can be special issues in February. You have to get approval for. And I know it's expensive. So obviously, if you were doing a you know a campaign for a district or something like that, you wouldn't want to have a singleton item that is only going to bring people for that item. Probably. I actually believe there there is a window there for emergency items. To be placed on a ballot that have to be placed on a ballot. I thought so. Thanks. Jay, do you have something? Do we anticipate support from the chamber this time? Yes. <laughs> I have a couple of chamber board members sitting here who might. I, I think we are going to have support from the chamber. I think the chamber board is still discussing what that looks like. We, there are some great models out there. You'll remember the last time the chamber's interpretation of their bylaws was that they could not support issues. Uh, we felt the, the bylaw language actually said they will not support political candidates. And so we felt that the issue could have been supported. Um, I think that they are still trying to figure out what that support is going to look like. We have also already made overtures to certain individuals in the community should the chamber board give uh, tacit support to it but don't want to be the vote yes committee uh, we have some individuals who we think uh, would have some interest in heading up a vote yes committee and doing uh, kind of a revenue and then they would run the vote yes campaign <laughs> mr townsend thanks mayor um thank you mr furborn um th related to taxes um are there a couple of other bills in missouri legislature that also threaten some revenue streams, if I remember correctly. Uh, the bill that allows us to do, and it's part of the campaign actually, the bill that allows us to uh, actually do the use tax, the new method, and provides us with the ballot language specific for this, the Wayfair bill, as you all know it had been called, uh, actually uh, reduces our uh, video utility and cable utility revenue over the course of five years uh, by half. So not just not just threatened but already taken away with this bill. So a portion of this campaign would be the following is going away and we need this to help supplement that loss in revenue. I don't know where it's at in the committee, but I thought I also saw something on real property tax as well. Let me, let me. Yeah, the, um, this is Senator Bratton's uh, amendment, last minute amendment to a bill. 
um, the uh, it it is to eliminate to reduce over time growth in the personal property tax however if you read deep enough into the bill the reduction in the personal property tax is actually um, offset by real estate so that their their opinion is uh, or senator bratton's opinion with a co-sponsor is that uh, there is an unfair application of the personal property tax in the state of Missouri. So the, the way the bill is written is that at, and the state auditor's formula is a little bit complicated on it, but the, the overall assessed valuation in, and payments by individuals in real dollar in real dollars cannot cannot be any more because personal property tax has gone up in any given year than they were the year before. You have all heard me use the water balance analogy on this. It's already in place anyway. It's just they do not feel that the local um, the local efforts are fair relative to personal property tax and that the the local assessors um, are doing an inadequate job with that so going back to this issue it was actually a year ago april it was april 6th of 21 it was on the ballot it wasn't on august so it was oh, in okay. april 6th so i just to let you know also is during that period of time the Missouri legislature was arguing for a better interpretation of what the use tax was going to be and so they they actually passed additional legislation in 21 that made it more what would I what would you call it pro support That's right, it was. with regard to uh, uh, how we could word it on the ballot and the Missouri Municipal League actually has a concerted campaign package for people for cities pursuing a use tax to assist them with that effort and so last year's legislative session addressed it and and made the language a little more understandable and uh, allowed mml to put together a decent package so it was no, rather than putting it in a almost like a vote no vote yeah you know a no was a yes and a yes was a no was some of the the uh, it was kind of the verbiage was confusing it's it's a straight yes vote this time and uh, an mml has a pretty decent package and actually the state language is more supportive of the use tax than it was previously so i think that gives us a little bit more advantage on the education effort on it uh, rather than what we had to overcome the last time around which may have made the chamber less likely to support it at that time than it might in the future so we are, we've not really broached that subject with the chamber yet we've kind of bounced it across the ice we haven't really broken through the ice with them yet so uh, i think that's still a, an obstacle to overcome given the previous uh, language in the bylaws and that having come up recently in conversation at a meeting uh, where there seemed to be some anti-sentiment toward that so I, that may be a little steeper hill than, than what we think it's going to be for the, the chamber to get behind it whether tacitly or out in front on it I hate to burst your bubble on that but that's kind of the way it's it's uh, it's looking right now I, I could be wrong there may be members on the board that are more willing to um, take it under consideration at this time and move forward with it but I do think that they have kind of um, made sure that the that we understand now it's about it's about personnel it's about people we're not going to be able to or candidates to support but that issues that benefit the community uh, will be considered that the couple of issues there I was bringing up the, not only I, work, I, I will say the stuff. ballot language we cannot change the ballot language we have to use the ballot language that was established but it won't statute. be the same as last time right it's going to be different right. 
Let me get there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the in, what the mayor is talking about as far as the ballot language being more favorable is it actually ends with a statement that it makes it more um, to help make it more competitive for local Missouri businesses Yes, is how that ballot language right. actually ends. So that's what he's speaking about with that particular portion. Um, it, it will be, it's going to be, as the mayor has indicated, a tough road to go, to go with the chamber if, if, if we don't have chamber support, um, it's gonna be a hill. Go ahead, Sonia. Just a quick question. My understanding about the rewording of the ballot language also, I think like the mayor was saying, was to reverse it. It was that a yes vote was really a, no, a yes meant no, and a yeah. no meant yes, but now it's straight. That's correct. Yes is yes, no is no, right? Right. I think, hope I that will be helpful. I do too. Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I said this before last time. I think the term use tax is confusing, and I wish they would take it a step further and made it less complicated by calling it really what it is instead of the, you know, the use tax. But my well, oftentimes it was given a Wayfair tax label as yeah, well, even, which kind of was, you know, indicated it was an online uh, purchase. They should situation. just call it that, though. I yeah, mean, the in my opinion. Tax, yeah. um, the next thing is whether we decide to do it or not. Um, what would keep us from starting an educational campaign on what it is? I mean, could we not start that immediately? Start putting stuff out on what a use tax is and what, what it does for cities? I mean, it could be just a general 30,000 foot um, uh, informational pieces put out on social media or on our w website about a use tax and not specifically what we're going to be doing with it or what we plan to do with a vote. Just a thought. Without declaring an election, it just yeah. My 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 initial first brush is is that going to confuse people into thinking that we actually have one in place, or is it going to confuse people if the council doesn't go for an election, but we're out there putting stuff out about a use tax that actually does not exist. You could educate them that we don't have it, and other municipalities have this, and uh, I think legally you're actually supposed to pay it. I mean, I think um, even though it's not, uh, you know, if you buy something online, you're supposed to pay the taxes on it, but uh, I mean, you don't have to put that out there. But um, well, I'm saying if it's the state extended, is collecting if state is, yeah. if, it, if we kick the can further down the road, maybe it would be, uh, I'm just saying it, my thought is maybe it'd be a good time to start educating the folks on it. If we do it sooner, then then we could do a campaign and start off with a campaign. Joe, I wanted to agree with that because not a campaign, educational. It makes it makes an educational initiative. Let's use that um, pure because we're not trying to coerce people into doing anything. We're just giving them information about what the future of our city could be like if we had these additional resources. And having it there, like you're saying now, um, all, it's always a good time to learn something. Yes, I'm John. Thank you, sir. I like their idea of doing an educational uh, promotion. Could we, or, or would it be prudent for us to put a question on our website, a pop-up question, would you support um, an internet use tax? and then below have information. I'd express caution on that one. I can see you getting grayer as yes. I'm looking at you. So, yeah. Yeah, every time someone says campaign today. Okay. <laughs> JG or something. All right. I just, I think we should go ahead and put it on the August ballot. And, you know, we're kind of dancing around this thing. So whether we should or shouldn't, I say we do it, the worst case scenario is they say no. We know we're going to need to capture those funds. It's roughly, what, Mr. Fearborn, about 12%, 15% purchases, somewhere between 10 and 15, that go outside the brick and mortar stores, purchases online. They, they do receive an unfair advantage over brick and mortar stores here in the city 
um, and we're not going to collect, that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize. If I go down, I use the same example, if I go to Lowe's and buy a reciprocating saw, I'm gonna pay almost 10%. But I'm paying to several taxing districts. I'm paying to the state of Missouri, I'm paying to the city and various others. So it's actually not gonna be that nine point whatever it is, I can't remember the exact number. It's actually gonna be more like about seven with ours on there plus the state, I think. Well, and one of the other things the council needs to consider is the fact that there are a number of other agencies that are already collecting, collecting. this. So it would just be ours on top of that. Right. So for most of the people, what they would be seeing is the two and a half percent. A tiny percent ours. increase. It doesn't amount to much. It really doesn't. Sonia? So when is the next opportunity for us to address the chamber with the issue? Would we have a chance to, to get the feel of the chamber before we have to make a decision whether to put it on the ballot or not? Yeah, there is a board meeting uh, next week, I think. Try to get it on the agenda. Melissa has that on her sheet. I actually have a presentation to the Chamber of Commerce for May 5th, if May that 5th. is a date okay. that you're meeting. Okay. We'd like, to, we'd like to take two cracks at the Chamber. First one, informational, just here's what we're doing, start to get that temperature, and then the second one would be the formal ask after we've had, they've had a few weeks to consider. Anybody else have anything? It's just informational in nature, correct, tonight? Tonight. Yeah. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll move on to the next item, uh, which is the air handler budget, which we talked about, the HVAC system. You want to go ahead? Thank you. As the council will remember, um, last week we took kind of an emergency amendment to you uh, to get some items on order wanted to go into a little bit more detail on what exactly is happening up on the roof of city hall right now so in 2018 uh, we actually hired a company dude solutions to do citywide facility analysis and on all of our hvac building conditions electrical fire suppression the works um, that analysis took into account uh, the amount of money that the city contributes and the amount of, to our building and equipment replacement fund, as well as the amount of money that we're actually spending so we could kind of do a revenue cost analysis. Um, that particular study indicated that our HVAC system would last until 2023. Uh, that didn't happen. Um, our HVA system, especially on mayor's in my side is gone <laughs> um, so each of the three units that's involved in this is fifty thousand um, dollars different types of units uh, different control boards but uh, the council will also remember that you approved additions to each of the three units with the cares act funding to allow for a sterilization system on those those are not compromised by the units failing. They can be removed and put on to the new units compatible. So we wanted to assure the council on that. Uh, last October, the unit that we have now purchased that was replaced last week um, was w fa actually failed and was immediately ordered. Uh, that was last October and we're just now got it put in last week. We anticipate longer lead times for the next two units. Um, so out of an abundance of caution on these two units, which are now making strange noises, uh, like what we had last Monday night, uh, these two units have to be replaced and to get the lead times necessary. And who knows, they may give out, which could make for a very, uh, another summer of council meetings where we have to have them over at center view thank god we have the redundant system over there um but we will we had hoped to put them in the cip for 2023 they're now obviously in the cip for immediately and we'll be ordering those next week um, the emergency replacement of the east that was a 20 ton 
train HVAC unit. The current bill that has the first reading calls for a 20 ton and a 30 ton train unit uh, to re be replaced 20 ton above here, 30 ton, 30 ton. Uh, same unit is on the east side for the engineering side. Uh, obviously includes removal of the old units and an all new control system that goes with it. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I think some folks got the picture. The 30 ton unit that they took off of here, the crane was actually parked right in front of the building and they swung the unit right over my pickup truck without telling me that it was, mm -hmm. so everybody's out there snapping shots of <laughs> will it drop. It was a very windy day. But I'm glad I didn't know what was happening. Um, but just wanted to give that to you in a little bit more detail than what we provided the other night. Um, if you have any questions on it, uh, the, the, the council's funding of the building and equipment replacement fund uh, has been phenomenal. Um, it's basically 1% of the total infrastructure needs that we have each year and it has gone it has protected us like here on a number of occasions the foresight of the council in funding up a replacement fund like that ahead of time and creating that bank account if you will within our budget has been extremely valuable that concludes staff reports any any questions about that okay and then our last item is volunteer recognition. I take that over. Thank you. <laughs> um, on a, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, on a couple occasions, different council members have come to us relative to our boards and commissions, past boards and commissions, and a um, number of different scenarios for possibly uh, doing either simple or more complex forms of recognition of that service uh, latest one is pretty simple would be pretty simple pretty doable for us uh, would involve uh, some kind of a program could be some subtleties to it but some kind of a program of calling back in either in front of the council or possibly in front of the Board of Commission that an individual served on in the past and having either the council or that Board of or Commission recognize those people for their service in the past just as a thank you because on the boards and commissions as those council members who serve know you get off of it and you're just off of it mm -hmm. in essence uh, don't know and basically the same way a formal council member gets a plaque having some sort of a different plaque for those folks, not the same as the council, but um, just want to know what the council thought about that, uh, what parameters you might want to discuss as far as do they appear in front of you all because you're the appointing body? Do they go back? Do we arrange with the staff liaisons to kind of get them back? We have lists of all of those who are, are still in the area and who we could be calling back in. How far back are we going to go? Do you know? Uh, if we Thought can get that? the names, we were yeah. kind of thinking um, uh, 2000. Oh, wow. Okay. Are you referring everybody or just volunteers? And, yeah, go ahead. Uh, whenever we're talking about volunteers, I mean, is it everyone that served or is it they get recognized like a, the Board of Adjustment say, hey, we want to recognize this person from three years ago? How, how do you decide? Uh, that it would be anybody who is alive and available and, and wants to come obviously we never want to force anybody to come in for recognition um, but let's use the council as an example we would find out the 10 planning and zoning commissioners who previously served and we would set up a date for them to come in and be recognized hopefully all at once um, give them plenty of notice and then kind of line them up mayor hands them each a form of recognition whether it be a plaque or whatever that was going to be uh, thank you um, because like I say when a lot of these folks left they just left 
either voluntarily or couldn't continue their service for outside reasons or um, so they, they in this case unlike city council members they were just kind of gone but some of them had a number of years of, of quality service to the city so just wanted to offer this up as discussion for the council yeah. Sonia just my my thought on it I wonder if it could look more like a reception where we have all of them because I know when I first served on Parks and Rec, you're kind of isolated as that board or commission, but to be able to be in a place where you're seeing all of the other commissioners, all the other members of the other boards would have been helpful to see the faces and then we can, we can all be there and we can do it all in one night. Potentially. Yeah, I, I actually like that idea because I think we had maybe center view and reserved the room and put up a large table up front with the, the individual awards, whatever we decide to give them, whether it's a set of coins, uh, which are, you know, which we preserve that three set coin set for recognition, uh, whether we give them each a set of those and, and outline the years of service in some form or fashion that on that particular board or commission or maybe multiple boards and commissions that they served on. So I think we've got a few of those. Would you all like that to be on a separate night from say a council work session or would you like it to be scheduled for a council work session night but still uh, still in a reception format? I'll yeah, think. I think, well maybe even the fifth Monday. If there's one coming up, uh, fifth Monday might be uh, a great way to do that and it just kind of falls in line. Mr. Barber, what you got? Yeah. Um, the question is, you know, you go back uh, 20 years, uh, recognize these folks, then what do you do? You know, are you going to do this every 20, once every 20 years, or do you do it um, once a year? Do you, what's the, what's, what do you do going forward? Going backwards, and then what are you going to do going forward? I'm sorry, sir. I just introduced this for council discussion. I have no idea. I mean, uh, for for moving forward, I think if if there are put replacements that occur on the cycles, then we recognize them at the next regularly council meeting, regularly scheduled council meeting. We do that awards and presentations at right at the very beginning of the meeting, and don't let ourselves get behind. And that could be a recognition that's read through, you know, uh, just even through one proclamation potentially, or or one resolution recognizing those individuals for their service. We can do it all at once, go ahead. Another quick question. So we're talking about recognizing people who are no longer on those boards, not the people who are currently on the boards, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's how it was presented to me a couple of times. I mean, they're, they're, as the mayor said, when they come off the board, then we would recognize them at that time. Vicki, I saw you going toward the mic. Do you have an idea about how many people we're talking about? I have no idea. I just threw out the, the 2000 date at this question, so I'm, I'm really not sure on. A lot, of it, a lot of folks have served for a long time. Yeah. Sure. I actually kind of like the idea of the board coming, the current board though as well, just so that way they know who's, right. sir, okay. Yeah, it would be a, just a huge volunteer reception. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's why we'd have to have center view. Couldn't really facilitate it here. Anything else? Yeah. I, I'm generally in favor of the idea of recognition. I sounds like a big bite of an octopus to go back 20 years. And to be fair, there were some people that got appointed and then just never fulfilled their duties. They were on that roster for three to four months, didn't show up, uh, and then were just gone and we had to get rid of them. Or people that just really just couldn't, there some that couldn't do that kind of stuff. Exactly, yeah. There, there might be some hard feelings that get dropped with this. It's something we gotta think about. Yeah. So we go back to 2020 instead of 2000. <laughs> two years. <laughs> yeah, two years. <laughs> We'd like to thank the three of you for being here. 2010 might not be bad. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What about setting like a like a time limit or you know like a year minimum served or something along those lines? They served a term. We used to have an annual reception <coughs> for volunteers where we actually did recognize their service at a at a reception um, and all 
sitting board and commission members would come to that and we'd thank them for that service but i so they they got thanked up until covid probably uh but uh, even a few years before that i know i think it was only my first year we had one and then after that it kind of mm -hmm. fell by the wayside we haven't had a, a volunteer recognition Event. go ahead we couldn't have that in tandem going forward at recognizing as they come off the committees and boards but then at a point during the year we have a uh, like you said a um, reception to bring everybody together yeah. just to kind of you know, commemorate like an alumni mm -hmm. one of yeah. one of the reasons we stop oh, one ahead. of the reasons we stopped having it is because it was not really well attended yeah it did it did kind of fall off mr barber yeah i'm surprised um our each of our boards and commissions don't have a formal policy that they recognize somebody i wonder if that's something that uh maybe we ought to be looking into as well i mean obviously they're serving at that level and each body should have something in place that when somebody leaves or you know whatever um they can formally recognize them at that time too I you know I, I don't have a problem with us doing that as well but I think the, the body itself maybe should look at that as well mr. Burke thank you mr. mayor part of the um, center view discussion early on was um, we have this we have you know the mayor wants to have a volunteer and, and commission uh, breakfast but there wasn't really any place in town that we could have it where we could get all those people together um, there was maybe only one option um, before Centerview was even there and there were, I mean as far as even renting out the back of a restaurant or whatever there just were no availabilities and that was part of uh, the things that we talked about when we that was a need one of the needs that we mentioned in that in that informational piece I'm trying to figure out how far back or how many what if we set an amount of let's keep it under 200 people or and then that way you could go back each year until you hit that amount just to give a guideline maybe because the more people we get the cost is going to go up and since we're already having emergency funds and wanting to get more money from the taxpayers I think just trying to make sure we're used as well I think you'll be surprised how few are available um, we've we've had most of the time people get replaced because they're either moving out of the city or they've retired and want to do something else or uh, we've had very few that that got replaced at the end of their term uh, but that you know but that can happen too at the end of their three or four years term of service that because right now we've got a huge um, or it's growing a, a list of applications and so when when I be in future end of terms I'll be considering new people to come on board because we can give them an opportunity to serve their community because it is a volunteer position would the council have a taste for those council members current council members who did serve on boards of commit and commissions also being recognized You just keep wanting to slime it up, don't you? <laughs> just kidding. I, just, I, I just, I just have the nightmare of the pre presentation night, sir. I know. Okay, I know. okay could everybody come up? Sorry, I don't have anything for you. <laughs> I would, I would say, leave it to the prior members who served and current council members who are served on previous boards or commissions. They have the mic currently, so that those who've served um, come back for recognition. But and when we fall off the roster, then at that point, we'll fall on the schedule of being recognized after we've gone on to the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> My opinion. Bigger, better thing. PC, post council, sir. Well, there you go. <laughs> post commission, post board, whatever. Anybody else have anything? Oh, I just have one more, uh, just ma mainly uh, comment. Uh, the mayor appoints these people, so the mayor, the, he's going to be putting this all together, right? It's all going to be him, him seeing it and doing the whole thing. These are all appointees of the mayor, so. The mayor is an excellent delegator, sir. <laughs> uh, 
a more manageable program might be something like if you're on board of zoning adjustments, you're on planning and zoning, whatever it is, and you serve at least one full term under honorable conditions, then that board presents a plaque to that individual when they leave service, whether that's the end right. of one term or two. No, that's and maybe we just do a one-time uh, reception for past members, and we invite them, we have some refreshments, we thank their service in general to all who serve, and call it good, and then we've got a formal program That's going good. forward. Yeah, I don't like that. I like that. Yeah, John. My thoughts are exactly what he said. I think that's a good idea. Thank you, Joe. I think there would be some uh, individuals that would appreciate. I'm thinking of my father. He's got an entire office full of volunteer for 30 or 40 years, and he's still down doing stuff in Warrensburg, even though he's been there in 50 years. Um, but I think a lot of those kind of people would appreciate a certificate signed by the mayor that they could decide to hang on the wall if they wanted or, and that, would, that wouldn't cost anything. But yeah, that even denotes their years hand. of service and, uh -huh. and in what capacity. Sure. Just people, work. people appreciate that. I, yeah. They like to have a legacy, you know, when their grandchildren come and they're like, wow, look at all these things. Mm -hmm. what, you know, what is all that? And people like to talk about it. Because they they love we you know they love the doing two ideas, yeah. but I, I don't know. Thanks, Sonia. And I I like that idea too. I think people are going to be more likely to come if they feel like they're getting something personalized, even if it is a piece of paper. Um, but with that recognition, the other thing just to consider is I know we have some people who served for many many years who didn't get any recognition, would we want to consider something special for someone who served five years or more or 10 years or more? Um, what about just waiting and maybe taking a look at over the past 20 years, how many people we're looking at and how that would break down so that we see what we're really looking at as far as like the majority of how many terms people have served? Sure. That's a good point, Mr. Barber. One more question I always tell Mr. Fairborn my job is not to make his staff buy more aspirin. Um, <laughs> who's going to be doing all this, putting all this together? And this sounds like something pretty complicated. It's going to take some time and some uh, person hours. Search. See, isn't that great? What do you need, sir? Um, well, it, it will be a multi-department effort, sir, and as long as we're not having to do it next month, we, uh, we'll be able to put it all, I, I think we'll be able to put it all together, um, kind of take the discussion from tonight and, and get back with you with a kind of a cohesive plan with still some questions that are out there like, would we like to recognize different lengths sure. of service, et cetera? Okay. Which can be denoted on the certificate as outlined. One last idea, at least for me, uh, one last thing. Um, is it possible that the Historical Society already has compiled this information? Because, okay, no. They, they don't keep this level of detail, sir. All right, I was, I was curious. Because there's a lot of detail over the there. The clerk's office has there's a lot of detail. The detail, to be honest with you. Anything else on that topic? Anything else? I do have another. I have another. Okay. Ms. Harmer. If everyone is available a few minutes before next Monday's meeting, would you please arrive in your best outfit, <laughs> <laughs> hair fixed, <laughs> uh, so we could take a group photo, and then I am happy to update any individual portraits um, for anybody that wants. Does that work for everyone? Uh, 6.30 for the group photo. Okay. Knowing that Mr. Berenson will be here at 6.40. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Berenson. Yes, if if the weather is 
wonderful. Hopefully it will be. Hopefully. Yes. Next Monday is the award ceremony for Belton High School students. I'll be presenting scholarships to students. I'll, I won't promise I can be here by 630. It starts at 6. I know I can be here by 7. <laughs> I don't. You can Photoshop me in. Photo. I, I do not want to Photoshop you in. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, can, we can hold off for another couple weeks on the group photo if that's better for everyone. We can do that. We, we, know, we can always start the meeting 15 minutes late as long as it's posted up, 7.15. We'll, we'll post the meeting for 7.15. Easy enough. Okay, so 7 p.m. group photo. If you want an individual headshot. If you can, we'll hang around for Sunday to get in. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be ready at 6.30 for individual headshots, too. All right, okay. that'll work. Yep. We're going to be here at 6.45 or we're going to be here at 6.30? 6 o'clock for you. Let's go now. Okay. Come by and pick you up. Uh, anything else? Anybody else have anything? If there's nothing else. We'll stand adjourned. Thank you. It's all good. It's all good. Waiting for them to turn the camera.